Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going guys, welcome back to the Source Code, my name is Deshaun, and today I just want to go over briefly what MongoDB is in the short little intro. When I first made the video, I didn't really do a good job of explaining it, but I also plan to go back and do this. Uh, so basically MongoDB, and I'm just reading this from what they have because it is written perfectly and is written in a way that I think everybody can understand. So MongoDB is an open source document oriented database designed with both scalability and developer agility in mind. Instead of storing your data in tables and rows as you would with a relational database like MySQL, in MongoDB you store JSON-like documents with dynamic schemas. The goal of MongoDB is to bridge the gap between key value stores, which are both fast and scalable, and relational databases, which have rich functionality. Using BSON, binary JSON, developers can easily map to modern object-oriented languages without complicated ORM layers. This new data model simplifies coding significantly and improves performance by grouping relevant data together internally. And and then basically, this MongoDB was created by Pharma DoubleClick Crown founder. That's not important. But basically, MongoDB is a really, really fast way to store information for applications, for servers, for websites, for whatever you want to store data for. So that's all I got for the intro of this, and we're just going to jump right into the video, so I'm going to skip over the intro that I had there. But enjoy. And I'm kind of excited to do this series. It's not going to be a very long series because there's not really a whole heck of a lot to go over because uh, once you learn sort of the basic concepts, it's more or less just making things more complex from there. But the first things first is go ahead and Google MongoDB Atlas or use the link down in the description. And you're going to want to go here and create an account. And you're going to want to create a new project. You shouldn't have to assign an organization, but if for some reason you do, um, just go ahead and make an organization. Uh, but we're going to create a new project here. And we'll just call this Tutorials. Doesn't have to be too specific. Create project. And I'm actually going to close down my IntelliJ because I don't need it. And we're just going to go ahead and build a new cluster. Now this can take some time here, so we'll just call this um, MongoDB. Uh, go ahead and select the free Amazon one and scroll all the way down. You're going to have to set a, an admin. Uh, I'm just going to set mine as admin admin. And I'm not a robot. Okay, so now this does take a little bit of time to make. Uh, so if you hopefully got seven to ten minutes, uh, so just hang tight and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so now that our uh, cluster here is created, we can go ahead and click connect. First things first, we're going to have to add an IP address. Uh, so we'll just add current IP. And this is just making an IP whitelist, right? So this is just using my current IP right now. And now you can allow access from anywhere or you can make it so it can only access at certain locations, which would probably be the best that way uh, if you're running like a server or an application. Uh, you can make it so only your IP can be used to connect into the MongoDB database. The next things first, or next things next, we're going to go ahead and connect with MongoDB Compass. Uh, I'll also put a link down in the description where you can download this. It's just going to ask for some information, uh, more or less you just see who's using their application and who isn't. Uh, but go ahead and download, install it, and you're going to want to just copy this, and we'll paste it here. We're going to replace we're going to add right here next to the at sign our password, which I think I made it admin. I already forget what I made my password. Um, right, okay. So I'll do that. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter if I'm too secretive about this uh, list thing because you can't access, well, well, now that you know what my IP is, but I'll just make sure I use something else next time. <laughs> but once you open MongoDB Compass and you have that uh, string copied with your password, it's going to notice that there's a string detected and you can go ahead and click yes uh, we'll just do yes again and just go ahead and click connect and it should take a little bit here but you can go ahead and it should connect um, like I said it might take a little bit it's just setting up things for you know your first connection just checking your IP and whatnot you can see that it just popped up there on the side uh, so it has been added which means it probably is going to com it is going to work which means I got the password right alright so there we go so now we are in our MongoDB server 
Uh, and now this is super cool. Um, there's not much really here to see because we haven't done anything yet. Um, but it shows you all of your uh, information here that you want to see. So like your uh, connection times and how much memory your uh, system is using. I'm using shared memory, so it's probably not always going to be the fastest for what I need, but it'll do the job. But first things first, let's just go ahead and just create a database. We'll just name this MongoDB and we'll make our first collection uh, tutorial. Uh, tutorial, we'll just say we'll make our first collection one uh, for episode one, which is going to happen next. Well, it's really going to be episode two, but you get the point. So now we can go here, our database, and now our collection. And now this is where we can start making stuff. And you can see it here, insert document. And now we can start creating all these different things. But we're going to do this inside code in the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And stay tuned for Thursday, where we actually jump into our, your preferred IDE of choice and start showing how you can code this and start inserting data into your database that way. So thanks for watching.